Hello everyone and thanks for joining today's webinar. It is going to be um, client portal. So we'll talk about what that is and how to actually um, set up the client portal for either clients or some of our clients use it in different ways um, for some of their internal people as well. So first things first, as with anything in the system, there's of course security rights revolving the uh, the actual client portal. So if I come into menu, if you have admin rights or rights to system setup, you're going to be here. And some of the security settings here are ultimately what determines what someone has access to. So you'll notice full user rights, which means people that you're paying for. You'll also notice there's a heading for client rights. This means that if they are a free user, the system is going to look at these particular rights that you have set. If you are paying for them as a user, then they would be under the full rights section. So when we go into the contacts, because typically it's a contact that you're making a free user or at least a client login, there's an option to put them in a security group. So obviously I could put them into any security group that I want. Most will have some sort of client a security group. And then again, if they're a free user, then this is all that you can give them access to. If they are not a free user, then really they fall under this side of the security rights section. Okay, so that's the difference between the two is this is what you're paying for. These are the ones that you're not paying for. So technically you could put a client into like an admin group or some other group, but they would still only have this side of the rights unless you're paying for them. So this section you would want to go through and determine what can they actually view. Um, this would be one part of it is kind of going through and determining, well, can they see um, project requests? If we're doing project requests, can they delete them? Can they edit ones, not that they created, but for others that are within their company? So you'd want to go through and determine what each group, because you can have multiple client groups if needed, um, you would want to go through and determine what can they actually have access to. So for the client portal, I mentioned some clients use it in different ways. So some of their users, they don't really need to do a whole lot in the system. So ultimately you can give your employees like a, a contact login uh, or a free login. And what that means is they would have access to WorkMajig, but it would be in a very limited capacity. They don't have full access, they don't get to see everything in the system, um, they would just be limited to whatever you actually give them access to. And the reason that someone would do that is if they have a freelancer out there or someone that really just needs to check off that they've done their, their part, they don't need to track time in the system, then they can be listed as a free user in the system, not go towards the count of paid seats that you have, but they would have that visibility within WorkMajig. They can maybe see the schedule or at least part of a schedule of a project. They can mark tasks as complete, but again, no ability to actually track time in the system if they are a free login. They can create project request forms if you want. And what a project request form is, is the ability of telling them um, that or having them fill out a form basically that you want uh, to, that they want to create a project. It gives the general details and the scope of that particular project. It goes to whoever you list as an approver, and then ultimately it can be converted into a project. So that's what a project request form is, is the ability of having some sort of like routing process for someone to initiate a project, but not actually create one, just fill out a form requesting one. So that's a part of client logins um, for some people is the ability of doing those project request forms. So you'll see something like edit project requests, delete project requests. That's what those are central to. And then of course, um, when you create a project or after you've created the project, you can have some sort of project description in there to give again, the scope of the project or maybe an overview of what that project uh, encompasses. So that would be, project description, 
Um, this is project specs. So we usually don't call it specifications, but in the rights we do, this is basically spec sheets in the system. So you'd want to go through and determine again, what should someone have those rights to. Once you have your security groups set up, then the other part of it is really within the or the contact section. So if I come into salesperson, you have contacts. This again is where you're going to add in the logins that might be free logins um, or people that aren't really employees in the system, but they need access. They would fall under contacts. So you can come in um, plus button to add a new one. Otherwise, if it's already a person that you have in here, then you can come in. And then under the more, there's going to be a couple of options that we would need to go in and set. So if Jimmy needs some sort of client login, then we're going to come in and I would say you would do the contact settings first. So if you have a more in the contact record, then you want to come into contact settings. And this will look similar to the employee side. So if you go into the employee records, you'll notice it's some of the same sections in here. We're obviously missing accounting and um, and a few of the other sections because they're not really needed, but it is very similar. So ultimately to give Jimmy a login to the system, we're gonna come to this controls, security controls section here. You'll notice there's the ability of doing a username. So this falls in line with the um, your guys' usernames, meaning we recommend that you just do the email address because it's specific to that person. If I try and just do Jimmy C um, for the username, it's possible that someone else has that same username. So I wouldn't be able to use that particular username. So we just say default to email address. It's easy for everyone to remember and it's unique to that particular person. You come in and say, set a new password, put in a password, type it again to confirm it. And as soon as I hit save, they would be able to log into the system. This is what I was talking about as far as security groups. This is gonna show the same list of security groups that you have in the system. So it's not like me segmented out and said, well, if there are contacts, they can only be in clients and vendor freelancers. It'll show all of the groups. And again, you would have to pay attention to the client rights side as opposed to full user. So I put them in vendor freelancers because maybe that's what Jimmy is. And then they are active, meaning that they actually can go in and log in to Workamajig. Next thing that you want to be aware of is the free login. So as soon as you create a contact, they this is automatically checked because we don't want to charge you for anyone that maybe doesn't need to be charged for. So this is checked by default. The only way this gets unchecked is someone goes in and unchecks the box. You'll notice this it says um, if this box is unchecked, the contact has a username, you will be billed for this particular user. So as soon as this is unchecked and this is filled in, then you are charged for that particular person as a full user in the system. Even if their security group is something of a group that doesn't have a whole lot of rights, doesn't really matter, they would be considered a full user. So you wanna use this box um, sparingly. It is, again, is defaulted as checked, so you would not be charged for that particular person. So again, what that means is they'll have a very limited view of Workamajig. Once you have this set up, some people go in and um, maybe assign them to certain things or subscribe them to things. You can even send notifications. I don't have a lot of clients that would actually set that for a contact in the system. So just remember, we're looking at the contact side currently. So once you close out of that, um, the other option in here is going to be the preview client portal. So this basically gives you a view of what they might be able to see if they go in and actually log into the system. So you'll notice it'll open up another window and it'll be a little bit shortened. So right here, this is exactly what the client sees. There's not really going to be a work magic menu for them. Uh, their menu items are basically going to be on this particular page. Um, It'll show anything that they have. So it looks like I have added this particular person to a couple of estimates. Um, they've also sent some project request forms so we can go in and view those. But what a lot of people would do is actually go in and assign 
a contact to a task. And again, they can't track time, but they can go in and actually tr uh, check the box to say their particular part of the task is done. Okay. So any of those tasks that we might have assigned to this particular person, those would show in here. You'll notice he's not currently assigned to any tasks. So nothing shows in there. Um, so only assign tasks with completed predecessors. This is basically that checkbox to say, can they see complete uh, all of their tasks or just the ones that are ready to work? Okay. Um, the other part of it is if they, if we give visibility to projects, here's the projects that are currently going on. And again, it shows just a few of the different tasks that are in that particular project. If you click into it, it opens up a little bit more. And again, their, their visibility is gonna be very condensed. They don't get to see a full project like maybe you do. They get to see some general details for that particular project. So overall, my project is 28% due. Here's some of the tasks that we have coming up. You can show more to see um, maybe additional tasks in there. Remember the right for specifications, being able to view project specifications. That's this. So this person does have the right to do that. So they can actually go in and view any specs that we have for this particular project. I also gave them file rights so they can come in and take a look at any of the files that are in the project. They can see deliverables. Um, if you give them access to those particular deliverables, this is the deliverables um, listing screen. And it, for those who don't know what deliverables are, that's basically the ability of going in and routing around files for review. And then the last one is the project team. So maybe I need to know who is on this particular project. You have a project team and it would show those actual um, the actual users or the people that are on that particular project. And again, I had put Jimmy on the project, so that's how he has visibility to it. If they're not on the project, they typically do not get to see that project. So again, very condensed view, um, but it should work for maybe um, being able to go in and take a look at over uh, some of the basic information. So one of the questions was, can a client receive a notification to approve an estimate without setting up the client portal? Yes, that just basically goes through email. So on the project, if you have external approval, approver on the estimate, so you always have an internal, but the line below that is external approval, they just have to be a contact in the system. And then what happens is if they're not a client login, they just get an email it'll have the PDF printout of that estimate. And then there would be an approve or reject option in that email. They could just click on whatever one is applicable. And then that goes through and, and tells the system whether they approved or rejected it. So they do not have to have a client login in order for that to happen. Same with deliverables. They don't have to have a login. They could just be signed in as a guest. Any other questions right now? And you could either use the Q&A or the chat box. Either one is fine. OK, so then um, the last part of oh, one coming in, um, could a free user inadvertently delete files? No, because you would set the rights to disallow them to, um, to delete files. All of the files options are separate rights, meaning um, in that security settings section, there's a there's a full section for files. So most of the time, well, and that's checked off by default. So unless you give rights to delete a file or a folder, they wouldn't be able to do that. Another question was, is the client password auto sent to the client? No, we never send out um, contact information or logins just because we're not sure if you're setting it up um, playing around with it first uh, before you actually send it to them. So that would be completely manual. They would never know what their username is. They wouldn't even know that you set them up with one until you actively go out and let them know. A lot of people do that with a conversation in the system. Otherwise, you could just do it through whatever email you typically use. Other questions right now? 
Okay, so a couple of items on here, you'll notice that conversations can be seen by clients, but there's a specific checkbox in the system uh, or in each conversation that you have to check in order for them to be able to view it. So by default, they don't get to see every single conversation that's on the project. There's a specific checkbox that would allow them to see um, a conversation thread. So if I come into a project, any project that I have, then ultimately um, when I create a conversation, if I had Jimmy on here, there's this option to say, is it visible to client or not? One of my contacts is set to automatically be involved in conversations. So we saw that subscribe button for uh, conversations. So that makes it to where this box is checked. If, they are, if that is not automatically checked, this is not checked by default, but this is ultimately the checkbox that determines can a client or a contact see this particular conversation in the system. So we can set some to be visible and we can set others to not be visible to client because maybe we have some chats that need to happen that don't include the client and we don't want them to know. So you have those options um, to either include them or exclude them. And by default, this is unchecked unless you have a contact. So I think this is my contact that is subscribed to the conversations. And it's going to be on a per project basis. So if I come out, uh, I'm in my project, there's this team option. If you come into subscriptions, this is ultimately where I had indicated who's going to be on the conversations, any conversation added for this particular project. If I go to a different project, those options might be a little bit different. So I might not have anyone checked to be subscribed to the conversation. So if I uncheck uh, Sansa, I believe that's my contact, then if I come into a conversation, um, she gets excluded from that particular conversation. Any questions right now? Okay, so on a project, if I want my contact to be on that particular project, actually, I'm going to find the con. So here we're in the contact record again. So Jimmy is our contact. This is where you can see any projects that that person is on the team of. So they might not be assigned, but they're at least on the team of the project. So if I click into projects, here are the two different projects that that contact is part of. So you can click in. It's on the team, so we can see that here. And again, if I wanted to uh, assign him to a task, then you're going to come into the schedule. They have to be on the team tab first in order to show up in this list. So let's say they should be a part of this. You can insert row. You can now type in Jimmy because he is on the project. Again, we might not allocate hours because he doesn't need to actually track any time to it, but if he has some sort of part as far as signing off on a task or maybe he just got an email and had to forward it or whatever it is that they're supposed to do for that particular task, you can put them on there, not allocate hours, and then that would show up as a task for him to do. So my schedule saves and we can see Jimmy's on there. So then if I go into the client portal, that would probably be a task that would show on there. I'm not sure when that task is due and it's an old project. So it might not, uh, yeah, so might not show up. Um, but if it was within the date ranges um, that are current, it would actually show up as something for him to do. So, okay, there it is, lucky us. Um, it's in here and this is all they see in order to mark it done, right? And if there was task details, so if we put a task description on there, they would be able to see that particular task description so that maybe they know exactly what they are trying to do uh, or supposed to do. And again, it's just a simple click on the done and that marks their part of the task complete, same as how your employees actually mark tasks complete. 
one question was where did you go to show the subscription so on the project if i'm just in the project that's going to be under the team tab because it more deals with the actual people you usually see this service section but you'll notice over here is going to be subscriptions there's a couple of things that are involved in it so this is just conversation so anyone that's checked means that anytime i start a conversation for that particular um, project all of those people would default into the email too. And then there's some for to do's and if something was uploaded as a file and then deliverables, there would be a notify and an approve option. This can be set at the employee record. So if um, I should be involved in any conversation on any project, that's actually in the employee record. There's the same options where you can auto subscribe them. And so if you set that at the employee or the contact record, it rolls down to any project that they are part of. Other questions right now? Okay. So if I jump back to my client portal, again, this is where they see what tasks they're supposed to do and then they have a done box, no option to track time unless they are a full user and then they fall under the full user rights and they would have a, an actual menu. So project request forms, um, there's a whole nother webinar on how to set them up, but once they are set up and this particular user needs to um, submit a project request form. They basically click on the plus button to create one. I have like six or seven that I added in here. Each are going to be different and you can determine which one or ones that particular contact has access to. So you don't have to allow them access to every project request form in the system. You can say, well, they are on the digital side, so maybe they can just see project requests that are digital related. Um, so that's in the actual setup of the uh, project request form. But if they want to go in and set one up, they click in their name and their email default in because that's a default that I have on my request form. There's also the ability of putting a client project number. This is different than the regular project numbers. It's basically if the client has a particular number to reference this project as they usually use that for um, for the client project number or some of mine will say well we actually put the PO number in there because maybe they have a purchase order number for the project. You can use this field for several options but that's what it was meant for is usually if a client has a particular number or reference that they need this project to be referenced as. Project name so I require that um, in my project request form so I'm going to put a project name. You have that project project description and then the due date of the project. You'll notice 6-1 is set, but if I choose something else because maybe I need that project sooner, when I go in and try and do that, it'll tell me that I put a minimum of 10 business days saying that this particular project has a minimum number of days that it takes in order to complete. So it'll tell me the earliest that I can do it is 6-1 and it will actually revert that back to 6-1. Here's my questions that I added into the project request form. So meaning this is basically the spec sheet that we added to the project request form. So here's all of the questions that I need answered. You'll notice you can either make them required or not. All of these are not required. So technically I can just move on without answering um, any of those. And then ultimately I can um, add in an attachment from here if needed. Otherwise, if I just want to submit, I can go in and submit and it would actually submit it as uh, Jimmy. And so it would go through that approval process that we set. If they get one back, they get an email, but they'll also be able to see it in their contact um, record. They see a rejected option. They click in. Here's the project request form that got rejected. They can go in. They can see the details and then they can actually go and um, edit the answers if they need to. So they go in, change it, and then they resend and then it goes through that process. 
if they at least want to see the ones that are outgoing, they can click in. There are six of them that are outgoing. They can look for something in particular if needed. Um, otherwise, they can go in and actually take a look at those particular requests. Um, other options in here is there are some settings that you can set in here and you typically do want to go in and take a look. Uh, so under the settings, option you want to choose their particular security group so if i choose the vendors freelancers this also determines some of the security rights as far as what they can see and what they cannot see so um i'm in there you can choose a date range so right now um i did set it to all which is why that old task still showed up but you can change it to um like start on or before two weeks from today, a week from today, before today, before two weeks from today. So you have those different options, um, but most would probably just leave it at all because I can't imagine a contact being assigned to too many tasks. Do I wanna sort assign tasks by due date or do I just let it go by project number? So the default it'll say is project number. So it'll show you the project and then all the tasks under there. But do I want it to show all of the tasks regardless of project by due date? Here's also again where you can determine what they can see and what they cannot see. So these are in addition to those other rights that you saw on that security settings section. So each one of these is something that you can either allow them to see or disallow them to see. So showing the project schedule, the spec sheets, deliverables, files, estimates, next steps. So there's all kinds of different options in here that you can choose to allow them to see or again, not allow them to see. Most keep the budget out of it, but some do want their client or their contact to go in and see it so you can determine how detailed in the budget they get to see. There's campaigns as an option. So if I do campaigns or allow them to see campaigns, what can they actually see on the campaign side of things? Should we see the project request views? Um, so show project request views is basically if you have different views set up for project requests, should they be able to see that? Like sent for approval, rejected, approved, maybe approved without a project created. So that's views is basically your listing screens. And then the last section is going to be the invoices. So if we have invoiced this client, how much can they see? if anything. So again, determining what level of detail they should be able to see if they can go in to your actual invoices for that project and take a look at invoices. Any questions on the system settings here? Okay, so then um, that's really it for the uh, what the client can do is either these settings in here or the and or the security settings section in uh, system admin. You can either give them that access to a calendar or not, but I find that most people do not. Um, so what can they actually see when they're in there? This would bring up that work image calendar and then um, whatever you determine them to be able to see they would actually be able to see if they don't have access to other people's calendars, then there's typically not a whole lot that they would be able to see. Can the client mark up a deliverable? Yes, if they are an approver or if they're invited. So they basically have to get the link. Either they're listed as an approver and they can make a decision and markups, or you can put them um, either in the notify or um, you could just invite them. So I don't know if you've ever been at a deliverable, but in the more there's an invite others, you can at least send them um, a link. They can view, they can make comments, but they can't make a decision, but they can use those markup tools. So again, whether they have a login or not, they can go into deliverables, use the markups and or make a decision. If they have the client portal, then it just shows up as like um, somewhere in here you would see deliverables and then um, they would go in, click into deliverables, kind of be like this where you click in, it would open up the deliverable and then same as how you see it, you they would see it the same way. There's not a whole lot of difference. 
one kind of smaller difference on that is if they're a contact and they're in on the deliverable, they might not be able to see the internals comments, meaning if other employees have gone in there and made comments and or markups, the client might not be able to see their markups because that's one of the system settings that you have to set if you want them to actually see it. Other questions right now? Okay, so then if we're acting like the client, so once we have set up everything and we are ready for Jimmy to actually go in and log in, they log in on the same app that you do. So if you're app 19 or if you're app four or whatever app you're on, that's the same address that they're gonna log into because their login is on your site, okay? So you would basically just copy this. I would probably just open up a new browser so it doesn't get mixed up with my, um, my other logins because I'm also logged in as a full user. So typically you wanna log out as your full user if you wanna kind of test um, what it looks like to be logged in as the client. So again, they would log into app 19. It was Jimmy C at, I don't remember, support or something. Let me open it up. Um, but ultimately you would go in and click oops, the contact settings here, security controls, Jimmy C at Tesco. I'm going to set a new password because I don't remember what I said. Oops. I'm just going to do password of Jimmy. Hopefully I spelled that right. So then again, they don't even really get um, too much visibility in here, um, but pretty much what you saw when we did the preview uh, client portal is what they ultimately get to see. So in their menu, again, there's there's nothing in here. They can click on it and it doesn't really do anything because there isn't really a menu for them to see. All their menu items are going to be in here. So again, they were set as an estimate approver. So we see an estimate here. There were deliverables. We would see deliverables and then how many they're actually set to approve. And again, all their project requests that they are um, privy to or that they created, those would show in there. There's that assigned tasks and what projects they're part of, active projects. You can even have it show completed projects if you wanted to see any projects that they were previously a part of that are listed as complete. So you do get the rights to go in and um, log in as the client if you want to. Otherwise, that preview client portal is pretty close to what they can actually see and do within the system. They do have a notification bell because, again, there's something for them to approve. So if for some reason they didn't catch it here, this would also show them that estimate that they are set to approve. They also see the same thing where if there were e emails that were sent to them, they can see those emails when um, they're in that notification section as well. So if I click in, it'll show me the emails that were actually sent out to that particular user. And then the last part of it is that ability to click on their own name. Um, again, similar to yours, you have the ability or they have the ability of adding in an avatar. They can edit some of their contact information. They can change their username or, or well, really just their password, not their username. Um, but they can go in and change their password if needed. And then they can go in and set some of this general detail as well. So again, very similar, if not the same as if you were to click on your name when you were in your actual user profile. So that is the client portal. Again, it can be used in several different ways. So again, some people use it to have their, um, their users that really just need to mark tasks as complete. They would be considered a free login, give them general visibility to certain things, but not everything. Otherwise it could be actually one of your clients and they could have their own login, be able to request projects if needed, and or go in and just kind of be approvers or um, mark different things done depending on how much you want them to be in the system. 
So any questions? Uh, one of the questions was, is the calendar showing only the items pertaining to the projects they are assigned to or all of the calendar items? So it depends on, so it's similar to how your calendar is set up where if you have rights to view other people's calendars, those meetings might show up. So count meetings for other people might show up, but most of the time the contacts aren't in the view um, for the clients uh, or for the calendar. So most of the time they just see a, a blank calendar. It doesn't really show tasks unless you, um, you publish a calendar. I don't know if you're familiar with traffic calendar, but that's where you can actually get tasks to show up on the calendar. Otherwise, it's the actual like work imaging calendar. Other questions? Okay, so what I typically recommend is add yourself in as a contact in the system. Don't use the same email that your, e, uh, your employee profile is linked to because sometimes that can cause some issues. So if you have like a personal email or if you want to make up a fake email, I would say use that as the email address and the, the login. You can play around and test to see, well, what can they see and how does this work and what does it look like when it's a client login rather than a full user. So that's my recommendation is create one because it doesn't affect you, especially if you leave that free login box checked, it's not going to um, charge you guys anymore. Um, but if someone does inadvertently uncheck that, then you might see the charge uh, for that day or days that they are active and no longer a free login in the system. Then you can go in and assign that person to tasks to see what does it look like when they're actually assigned. You can put them on different projects, even if they're not going to be assigned to tasks, and then determine um, if you guys are using project requests, should that particular pri uh, client be able to submit project requests as well. So any last questions before I let you all go? Okay, so the recording for this will typically show up um, within the next couple of days. We usually put it in the support section. So if you go to support, oh, I'm, in, I'm gonna go here. If you go to that support.workamajig.com section, there is an option to see the videos and webinars. You would go into webinars and then past webinars. This would eventually become a past webinar and then usually the link for it would just be listed here with the title of the webinar which is the client portal. One of the questions was can you show us the deliverable feature in more detail? So deliverables um, there was like a full there's two different deliverable um, webinars that you can view because they were in the past one's going to be advanced and then there is more of like a, a basic one um, that you can find it's somewhere in here um, but I know we've done a few of them so you might see a couple of different deliverable options in there um, but you can view those to get more details on deliverables otherwise I can go into so here's the basic one and then a few up from that was going to be the advanced there was an advanced one right here so there are two um, that you can listen to, but as far as for the client side of things, their visibility to it is the same as yours. So if you add them in uh, to a deliverable, I guess we'll just use this one. Most of the time what happens is you have internal, which means that amongst employees, or work -a jig users. And then there might be a client login. This is typically where you're adding the client, whether they have a login and it's free or not. They do not have to have the login. So what we find a lot of people do is they do internal first. If this gets approved, then it'll move on to the client review round. 
you add in your file either through um, a new file or you can use what's existing in the file section of that project or you could do URLs or videos either through Vimeo or, or YouTube. add in your file if you add in multiple files when they go to approve it it's approving for the whole deliverable rather than file by file in one deliverable so if one looks good but the other isn't i can't approve one and reject the other the approval is for the whole deliverable so just keep that in mind that you might want to separate out like one deliverable for this file another deliverable for whatever the other file is so whoever your approvers are, again, on the internal side, you would want to add them there. Technically, you can add clients to this as well. But again, unless you go and find the checkbox to say, can a client um, view internal comments, they aren't going to see what other people are saying. OK, so that's a caveat for that is technically you can have everyone just in on the same round if you want to. Um, and if that's the case, then the client by default won't be able to see the internal comments that are being made. I'm going to add in my client. So here's Jimmy. We'll add him in. He's going to be the one approver, but you can have multiples. So what will happen is it'll go through an internal round and then it'll go through client if internal gets approved. Maybe I'll just kind of skip the internal side. So we should see um, just the client side go in and send, and then Jimmy would then get that email. Or if he's in his client portal, um, it'll refresh automatically, but I'm gonna just force it to happen. We now see that there is a deliverable to approve. So whether they click on the deliverable through email or they're in their system, this link is the same as the one through their email. They click on it. It opens up the actual file that we sent around. They want to make comments. They do the add a plus button. We have all these different tools that they can use. So if they want to mark up um, here, they can do as many comments as they want to and use all kinds of different tools if needed. So then my contact has two different um, comments in there. They don't have to use the tools. They can just add in an overall comment. Oops, sorry, can't talk and type. And so when someone else comes in here, whether they are free or not, they do get to see these comments. But if I was a employee in this system and I made comments, Jimmy typically would not be able to see those again unless we enabled that option. So ultimately, Jimmy needs to make a decision, clicks on the make a decision, either approves, approve with changes, or please resubmit. This is the only reject option. These two are considered a positive response in the system. I approve. So what will happen is his option to make a decision will go away because it's already made. Um, but then he can just close out and that's it. So really, there's nothing left for him to do. He has done that. So now he can just go through and, and work on whatever they typically do. But that's kind of in, in a nutshell. Otherwise, if you want more details on that, you'd have to view the webinar. Any other questions? Okay, well, I appreciate you guys um, joining me today. If you have any questions, just follow up with your account manager. Easiest just to do support at workimaging.com. And then you can always do a more um, specified call for you guys if there was maybe some more detail that you wanted to go in that's more specific to your, your company, like project request forms and subscribing and all of that. But I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you.